Okay, so the bed forms that we get vary with the flow speed. So um, at a low, relatively low uh, flow speed, uh, enough fast enough to uh, transport sand, for example, um, we tend to get ripples, right? which we've been talking about here. So uh, ripples are relatively small, and uh, basically the wavelength or the distance from crest to crest is often uh, 50 centimeters or less. Okay. They also don't grow very high. If they're pretty closely spaced, those slopes um, can't uh, get uh, very steep. And so usually the height is less than a few centimeters. So we'll say the height is less than four centimeters here. Okay. So as the flow speed increases, the um, tops of the ripples tend to get eroded off uh, very easily and the distance that grains saltate gets large enough that it can be 50 centimeters or more. And so you end up with a, uh, a change in the geometry. So as the flow goes up, we can say that um, uh, the ripple crests erode. And the saltation length is greater than, say, uh, 50 centimeters for many grains, not all of them. They go, it depends a lot on the grain size. But what happens then is that the ripples flatten out and you tend to get much larger bed forms that reflect that longer saltation length and you get dunes. So these are subaqueous dunes, separate from uh, windblown dunes, um, but they tend to be, they have a very similar um, geometry to ripples, uh, but they tend to be much larger. So one of the interesting things is because of the interaction of the sediment and the fluid dynamics, there's not a gradation in size between these. Ripples have a maximum of 50 centimeters uh, for the wavelength, but dunes have a minimum of about 80 centimeters uh, in wavelength. And they can actually be uh, meters or even tens of meters um, in, in some cases. Okay. So there's a distinct jump in size when the ripples start washing out because the flow speed gets too high and you form dunes. So then when you get to a high flow speed, the dune crests start eroding away. And that tends to flatten out the dunes and you the grains are just moving downstream so fast that they're not really quite saltating anymore. There's not very much upward motion and you end up uh, with a flat bed. You lose your bed forms here and you end up with um, planar lamination. We usually call it upper planar la lamination. And that's because it's at the high flow speed. So one of the really nice things about this is that as flow speed changes, we get different bed forms that gives us different cross lamination, cross stratification, and planar lamination in the rocks. And so we can use the geometry of the layers in the rocks to tell us about flow speed. So that works in addition to the grain size variations with uh, flow speed. And so we have two indicators that really help us a lot to interpret the flow uh, from uh, sedimentary deposits and in sedimentary rocks. Thanks for watching.